Now, our next guest is one of the most recognisable child actors of the 90s. At the age of five, she landed her first big role in Mrs Doubtfire and went on to star in much-loved films such as Matilda and Miracle on 34th Street. But growing up in Hollywood wasn't always as glamorous as it seems, resulting in her stepping away from the industry. Mara Wilson is now in a brand new docu documentary called Showbiz Kids, which looks at the impact of working as a child actor. And she joins us on the line now. But first, let's take a quick look at the documentary. <laughs> The best way I can describe it is, for a long time, to me, being recognized felt like the way it does when you're in a restaurant and they sing to you on your birthday. Just that, like, oh, God, this is nice, but I don't feel comfortable with this, and oh, in front of everybody, and everybody's going to know, and I, it's nice, but oh, OK. That's, that's kind of how I felt about being recognized. <laughs> and Mara Fantastic. Wilson joins us now on the line live from Los Angeles. Mara, a very good morning to good you. Good morning, Mara. Thank you. Good morning to you too. It's a little bit late there. We won't keep you up for too long, but we are quite <laughs> fascinated by your career, Mara. So thank you for taking the time out to talk to us here on Ireland AM this morning. We've just seen a clip of the documentary. Tell us a little bit more about this because this was a very important project for you, Mara, wasn't it? It was. I think there are a lot of misconceptions about child acting, and it was very important to me to tell my story and talk about what my experiences were, which in many ways were very pleasant. I had a good time as a child actor. I really did love acting, but there was a lot of things that went with it that were very difficult and would have been difficult for any child to deal with. So take us back to the beginning, Mara, when you first got into the business. You were at the grand old age of five years, five years old. Yes. How did you start in the business? How did it come to you? You know, it was very common where I grew up. I grew up in a, basically a small town that is part of a bigger town, Los Angeles, uh, in Burbank, California. And everybody had parents who worked for television studios. My father actually works on a morning news show. And we just kind of... I think my older brother had maybe done a commercial or two, and I saw what he did, and I was a very performative kid. I loved, I loved dancing and singing and telling stories. And so it just seemed like a natural fit for me. But that wasn't that unusual. I mean, it was the same as, you know, kids playing football or, you know, cricket or just games like mm. that. It was just something that, strangely enough, a lot of children did. But and in, I, I incredibly, did it, and Mara, I you're, you're in a movie town, a movie industry, and of course lots of people are working in it. But how do you go from being in the odd random commercial to being cast as the main child star in Mrs Doubtfire alongside Robin Williams and Sally Field? I mean, that's quite incredible. You know, it was pure luck. I, I don't think that I was, you know, especially more talented than anybody else. And I knew so many, many more child actors who were cuter than I was. I do think that I had a good ear for dialogue. And I, uh, I, I was quite the eavesdropper. I had older brothers and I was always listening in on them. Uh, so I think that that was probably it. And I also think that that was really just a matter of chemistry. I think that everybody on the Mrs. Doubtfire set really felt like we felt like a family. Mm. So I think it was that, and then things kind of snowballed. I don't think my parents ever would have let me do it if they had known that I was going to become, you know, to the level of fame that I got to. Because your, your resume, Mara, is, is staggering. I mean, the movies that you've done are movies that resonate with people. You know, Matilda, Miracle on 34th Street, Mrs. Downfire, which is probably one of everybody's favourite movies. When you look back at, at the work that you've done, it must make you feel so proud that you're part of these these beloved pieces of film history. It really does, although I think sometimes it, it, it kind of took me a while to get there. Yeah. There were times where I was frustrated with it because I thought, oh, I'm never going to live up to that. I'm never going to do anything that good ever again. And I felt kind of sad. I felt almost like, you know, like Matilda and the characters I'd played overshadowed me. It was almost as if they were, you know, a big sister or something like that. So that was a bit of a struggle. But I think now, especially now that I'm older and I see that there are still generations of children growing up on the movies I made, I, I mean, I'm incredibly grateful. I feel incredibly lucky and blessed to have had that experience. Matilda is uh, a rolling movie in our house, Mara, um, and it's just <laughs> such an incredible piece of work. And I read that the Roald Dahl classic was one of your favourite books and, and your mum got to see oh, yes. uh, some footage of the movie thanks to Danny DeVito before she passed away, which m must have been so lovely. Yes. 
I didn't know that until I was an adult, and I really love that he did that. I feel very lucky that there were many people around me in Hollywood <clears throat> who were good people, a lot of times family people with kids themselves, people like Danny DeVito, Robin Williams, Michael Ritchie, Chris Columbus, all of these people. Uh, and Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman did especially take care of me when my mother was ill, and I'm forever thankful to that for that uh, to them for that. Is that is that the key, Mara, to you know not just surviving but existing and you know in the business as as a young child and even as a teenager that that you are surrounded by good people, people who are grounded and who will put their arms around you when you need it. Because uh, speaking as an actor myself, I know it's not all glam. It's you know it's a tough, tough yes. way to make a living. Is it is it the key to have that blanket of support around you? It really is. And I think that with children, it needs to be fun for them. It needs to be this fun, interesting experience. And when it stops being that, they shouldn't do it anymore. Mm. You do kind of have to see it the way that, you know, a lot of kids play sport when they're young. They'll do things. I was a Girl Scout here in the States. You know, it was kind of like that with acting. I do still do a little bit of acting here and then, but it really is more of a hobby than a job. Mm. And mostly the acting I do is voiceover acting which is fun because I can play anybody and anything. I'm not limited by how I look. But yeah, I, I definitely think that having people there that are good and responsible for you, having a strong family and friends who are, are going to be there for you no matter what, that is the most important. When you decided, Mara, to pull back from the industry, and I suppose you had the luxury of being able to do that and focus on your yeah. writing and your voiceover work and all of the other passions that you have, what made you pull back in the first place? I think that I felt like I was better suited to other things at that age. I also think that I was a teenager and I wanted to know really who I was. I mean, how can you really know who you are when you spent your whole childhood playing other people? I also got very interested in theater, and then I got very interested in the work that people do behind the scenes in theater. So I wanted to explore that, and I, I was feeling a little bit disappointed at acting. I was at an awkward age for it where they didn't really have a lot of good parts for my age. So my parents said, look, why don't you take time off, explore theater, explore the other things that you want to do, and find out what else you love. And I think that that's really important. I think the people, the child actors that have stayed in the film industry their successful careers have learned that it's about more than just acting for them. And is writing a, a new, you know, is that your new, uh, is that how you, you find your, your most happy state? You've already released a book, but is writing what you see for yourself in the future in terms of screenplays maybe, writing for the theatre? Oh, yes. Yes, I would love to. I mean, I, I did, I, I wrote plays. I had a play go up at the New York International Fringe Festival wow. a few years back. That was really fun. I, I definitely want to do more writing. I also just like working with people. I like collaborating with people. Uh, I have a lot of friends who are, you know, good actors or good directors. And I think that it's really fun when you can find other people that, you know, make you really feel like that same kind of familial atmosphere. Uh, and you can find people like that in theater companies and in production companies and things like that. Um, but I've always wanted to tell stories. I mean, that's how I got into acting in the first place is I, I would act out stories <laughs> when I was a child. So I think really telling stories is very fundamental to who I am. Of course. It is uh, the sixth anniversary of Robin Williams' death this week, Mara, so it would be remiss of us to chat to you and not talk about him as a character. He was also uh, very kind to you as a young child on set, wasn't he? He was. He was wonderful. He was so patient with all of the kids, and he would do all kinds of things to make us laugh. He would make little, like, hand puppets with his hand. He, I remember uh, we had the scene when we were all at the big dinner table in the restaurant. He had <laughs> he had a purse that he was making uh, bark like a dog. You know, he'd make little <laughs> hand puppets like this to talk. He would tell jokes with us, and he could be very shy with adults. My mom always said that when she talked to him, he looked at his shoes. But wow. he loved having an audience and children are the best audience. And so we made a lot of jokes back and forth. And he he reminded me a lot of my actual father, you know, who's, who was a very funny and, and very kind person. And I, I consider myself very fortunate to have known him. It's one of the keys and one of the reasons that movie in particular works because, as you said, you said it earlier on, the chemistry it jumps off the screen. You guys clearly, clearly got along, liked and loved each other yeah. because that just jumps off the screen. Yeah. 
Yeah, Lisa Jacob is still like my big sister. I wow. we, we text each other, hey sis, all the time. <laughs> well, that's lovely to hear. Um, and we look forward to watching this documentary, Mara. Thanks so much for taking the time to Thank chat you, to us Mara. this morning. And uh, we'll let you Thank get you to bed so there, Mara. <laughs> Take <laughs> care. You. Thanks, Mara. Good night. <laughs> now you can watch Mara in Showbiz Kids on Sky Documentaries, which is available to watch on demand until Monday. Coming up, how does barbecue chicken satay sound? Join us over in the kitchen next.